And welcome back to This Week. Time now to get the views of our media and political experts. Bob Took is the former chair of the state Democratic Party and a former candidate for the United States Senate. Steve Gill, syndicated talk show host. Welcome, gentlemen. Always nice to see nice. you. Great to see you. It's the uh, first time since the flooding happened. Early on, we talked about the call for congressional hearings. That's still going on. That will likely happen now. We're talking about hinting, anyway, at lawsuits coming from Gaylord, possibly other companies that were involved and were suffered damage from this. Is this the next step? Is this what's going to be the next process, lawsuits being filed? Well, it sure sounds like it. And, um, and Gaylord, you know, obviously has the capacity to do that. And the question is whether the Corps uh, can be sued if they're engaged in flood control. There's a, a governmental mm -hmm. immunity to that. So there's going to be some interesting legal issues that are, arise from that. Uh, I'm glad they're investigating it, though. I think I think it uh, clearly needs to be looked at again to see what the what the strategy and tactics ought to be when you have an expectation of that kind of a deluge. Well, you've know, got the devastating impact on, on certainly Opryland, as, sure. as we've seen also with the, kind of the aftermath, the, the ripples of, of having to lay off 1,700 people. They'll start rehiring apparently in September for an opening back in November, but you still have a period of time when they can't continue to pay people when they're not getting any revenue from the hotel. But there are also small businesses over in that area that depend upon what's going on at, at Opryland Hotel for their business. You've got the, the mall that is shut down, and if they don't get open before Christmas season, you can't miss that season and survive. It's kind of the same thing that we're seeing in the Gulf right now. If you miss a summer season and you're in Destin or, or Panama City, or, or you, you've lost it because you don't have a makeup time. So both of these have huge economic circumstances beyond just sort of the big, easy-to-see picture of the big environmental picture, the big flood damage to a hotel. It's all that ripple effect to individuals losing their jobs and small businesses going out of business forever. And no there are literally of hundreds of businesses oh, absolutely. that are out of business in Nashville that most people, I think, just don't know about because it, it's not the big headline, but there are hundreds and hundreds of small businesses out of, completely out of business. And, and can they ever come back? Most of them probably will not. And if that first lawsuit is filed, which likely will happen sooner or later, will this be a ripple effect? Then we'll see all kinds of lawsuits from businesses, maybe even individuals, trying to get some kind of... Uh, restitution for the damage caused. Yeah, well, I think you'll see that. Obviously, people will kind of tail on, on to, mm -hmm. to what they do. I mean, their discovery, what they find out, can obviously be used in other matters. Kind of let them fund it, and we'll follow up and, and see what they find out and then follow up. But as Bob points out, you may have some problems when you're suing government entities. They may have yeah. immunities. It may make it uh, impossible to do anything. The Weather Service part of this equation, too. And I guess the real question is, the Weather Service and the Corps had never dealt with a, an event like this. We've never seen anything like this before. Can they be blamed for not knowing maybe what to do when they've never had to deal with this before, or should they have anticipated more? I guess that's really the question that maybe the hearings will bring out. That's why I'm happy they're having the hearings, because it doesn't necessarily need to be a blame game, but they really need to look at it again, because it clearly didn't work this time. And so we need to have the possibility of the worst-case scenario. Again, an analogy to the Gulf. It doesn't matter if you have plans for... Um, problems that are modest, uh, you need to have a scenario, a, a plan for when things are at their worst. And we talked a little bit about it. It seemed like the worst case scenario for this whole event was the lack of communications. Government entities, businesses were, were not being kept informed as to what the Corps and the Weather Service were talking about. And they missed it big. I mean, they, they were going to have the, the river crest at 48 feet. I think it ended up hitting at 52. That is a huge it is miss. a big difference. As we've talked really from the outset, Bob, I don't think there are mistakes that you can really kind of finger point are in that period after the floodwaters were close to topping out at Old Hickory Dam. It's the decisions that were made before that limited their Didn't options anticipate. when they got to that point. And I think that's where you've got to do a second guess. Not just to say, okay, where's liability, where's the recovery of damages, but how do we make sure that we're making better decisions in the future? It's kind of what went on after Hurricane Katrina we've as well. We've talked a little bit about kind of similarities, although maybe on a bigger scale with what's going on in the Gulf. We're now seeing the federal government suing BP for $69 million, which is really going to be a drop in the bucket for when this tragedy is finally it, finished. It's not a suit, it's just an invoice. It's a, it's a bill. It's an invoice, <laughs> and uh, there are going to be more invoices. But as this continues and BP still tries to cap this thing, it doesn't matter if they cap it today or tomorrow. What's out there is already going to be devastating. We're now seeing it hit the white beaches of the Gulf and the panhandle of Florida, and it's really going to be wiping out, as Steve talked about, all this summer tourist traffic, small businesses down there. This is going to have a major economic impact. And the fishing industry uh, in Louisiana especially uh, is in deep danger. And that, I mean, there's a whole culture down there that depends on that. The Cajun culture largely depends on the, on the uh, uh, fishing and the oyster beds, uh, the shrimp. Um, 
if if that goes away, it could go away for decades. Um, we lose a whole culture. Well, and you've also got the, the oil industry that's also going to be affected, the tourism industry, the fishing industry. Uh, the, the administration has now shut down about right. 33 drilling rigs. Bobby Jindal says that's going to shut out 6,000 people from jobs in the next three weeks, 20,000 by the end of this year. The impact on, on the economy, the, the environment, the economy, the emotions of the people in that region, as Bob points out, huge. This is catastrophic. This has gone beyond disaster. The president's down there again today. Has he taken control of the situation, even though he's been criticized for maybe not taking control early on? I think that uh, he's clearly now asserting much, much more persona into it, of his own persona. I think the, obviously the Coast Guard was down there from the beginning and, and appropriate federal agencies were down there, but I think at this level of disaster, the president needs to be there. Um, it's a tricky situation because after uh, Exxon Valdez disaster, it was clear that the onus was on the private companies mm -hmm. to take care of it and at their expense. So, so it's, it's hard to know how long to push the private company, how long do you push BP before you step in. Uh, I'm glad they're having both a criminal and civil investigation of BP. Um, and I will say that it's, it's absolutely uh, unforgivable that they were allowed to drill that deep well uh, with a waiver of all of the environmental conditions, all of the testing. Uh, none of that was done. It was all waived. So they never, ever tested any of those fail-safe mechanisms. And uh, that's a crime. I think the comparison also is to Hurricane Katrina, though, 46, 47 days mm -hmm. in. Barack Obama's made his third visit to the region now. George W. Bush had paid eight visits to Katrina at this point in time. So so you need to put the apples to apples uh, comparison, I think, there. I would disagree with Bob on, on this threat of, of criminal and civil uh, prosecution. Everybody knows that it's going to be there at the end of the day. I don't think it's particularly helpful to have the Attorney General go down and look over their shoulder now while they're trying to stop this thing from getting worse. It's kind of like if you've got a bomb disposal expert trying to figure out which wire to cut. I don't think I want the lawyers over his shoulder yelling into his ear while he's trying to make that difficult decision. If you mess this up, we're going to sue you. I kind of want him focused on the problem. Quickly, you're both lawyers. Does that do just that? Suddenly, instead of engineers having control of it, the lawyers have control of it. Well, I don't think the lawyers have control over it, but I think it needs to be absolutely clear to everybody that the, that BP is going to be held accountable for this. And uh, uh, But also, it needs to be absolutely clear that, that the former uh, uh, MMS, uh, uh, Minerals Management uh, Service, uh, is changed forever uh, because they had become a nothing, a, a, the most corrupt Ten organization. Seconds. If Gulf or BP hasn't already lawyered up, they should have hired me and Bob because we would have <laughs> told them to have already done that. Gil, Bob, too, appreciate very much your insight. Stay with us as we continues in a moment.